classical. One could probably work a little more with that imagination. What I want you to produce is about this emergence that wants to come out, which is. understand it at a level that, uh, you know, that, that men who are maybe more into control uh, uh, don't. Uh, so, uh, someone else. I mean, it's not about theories, it's about an experience. Uh, so, these are the flames of possibility here. <laughs> and, the yellow, and the yellow brick road of possibility, you know, so, you know, it's about choice, it's about... Uh, okay. And it's also getting a greater hold from the people, the participants, that, that's how, the only way everybody can be there is greater whole. We couldn't do our basketball story, which was that when the Boston uh, Celtics were the number one team forever and ever, they never had the leading score. Everybody worked. Here's what we discovered. The world is a fulcrum, if you will, and the systems thinking community is like a feather. Now, if I put the feather over here, and I've got the weight of the world over here, it's going to go like this. How could a feather ever affect a tipping point? The tipping point may not be the issue. What came up in our conversation was the concept of a tickle point. So the metaphor that popped for us was the tickle point. And as we were talking about the balance that exists between uh, East and West, uh, this notion of emergence from two different sources. So the first point that we made was the problem is the problem. <clears throat> the way we define problems and the points that were brought up, many people who define the problem help create the problem. <laughs> but if you look at how the differential diagnosis occurs in the medical field, you go up to Johns Hopkins and what they do is get a diversity of opinions from all different things that you wouldn't think of, at least five, around the table to do one thing, ask questions. It's those people who are able to stand around the table and ask the least number of questions and get the correct diagnosis. Those are hidden assumptions behind the maps we use. So the challenge comes up to what type of maps will the systems world use that goes beyond two-dimensional chessboard playing the great game that we all play. Uh, abstraction versus hands-on because systems are very much about abstracting from the world whereas a lot of the knowledge is hands-on and close to the work. We had some discussion about um, transcending Russ, uh, <laughs> that the idea that he had was that it was just to go beyond him and a lot of people are not going beyond him, they're trying to uh, stay with what his knowledge was. Guess well, what would you say the image is? The, the image of disconnection. Disconnection. The opportunity to reconnect. We did talk about maps. Yes. We talked about how we map reality. In some ways, I think we have uh, lived part of this new idea of systems, and especially as we've relegated the control part of the system to an addendum. That we've got 15 minutes now for the centers to come up and tend you would go first to say, okay, this has gone on. How, have you any thoughts already about how to go on? As far as Washington concerned, uh, my feeling is, is you know, I desperately want to work with the, the energy that exists. And oh, so I, I've got one, two, uh, three Washington people who are all hepped up on maps. I'm like, but there, maybe there's something compelling and visual that can be done in, in so map making. We have one 
center that was created in the year 2000. It's called ACOF Center, but we changed the name collaboratory because, so that's one. Then the second thing that was created for him, which was Anheuser-Busch put up $1.2 million, basically give scholarship to the students who are doing work in this in the field of systems thinking and decision sciences. It is an ACOF library was created. Which, one thing that I, you know, is exciting for me personally is the creation of something we call ACOF Virtual Inquiry Center uh, to leverage the technology to be in such a way to be able to support the centers all around the world. Just started trying to think about how we can, you know, develop this vision for the Virtual Inquiry Center, the ACOF Virtual Inquiry Center, and of learning, you know, do something, do something, and do something now. And from, uh, please, please come join us and talk with us uh, and give us your ideas, you know. And I was actually able to get in a position to have a two-minute conversation with Bill Clinton in March. We spoke at a corporate citizenship conference. Mm -hmm. And Bill Clinton had studied systems thinking from Myron Trivis when he was governor of Arkansas, and he set up a system-based network in Arkansas, and he had connections with other people uh, as governor. And he asked me to send him some information on anything that might be happening now. There's a lot of uh, what was said here was very inspirational. And in terms of looking for that sense of emergence, it's here and it's palpable. Just like you all to thank yourself for a tremendous Thank you, Bill.